full house tonight. It's wonderful. <clears throat> I was worried we'd be losing people with the rain. Thank you all for being here tonight as we remember our lost brothers and sisters. When I was asked if I would speak tonight, I honestly didn't want to do it. While it was certainly an honor to be asked, I know that there is nothing I can say that will do justice to the memories of those taken from us by unjust violence and hatred. Since our remembrance last year, at least 270 members of our community have been violently murdered, and those are just the reported numbers. Shot, stabbed, beaten, tortured, whatever evil a human can visit on another, we have been victims of. And I do say we, though those of us in this room have the luxury of being here tonight alive and well. It is a we because each of us is only a step away from that same fate. It is not laws and police protection that provides us safety. It is chance, circumstance, and the goodness and humanity that exists in the hearts of those we share this shrinking planet with. And our world is getting smaller as our voices now reach the distant corners of this globe. And the risks to our existence, the stories of our lives, lost and threatened, are finally being heard. While the vast majority of people are either sympathetic or simply indifferent to the challenges we face, <clears throat> there does exist a small but vocal minority who perpetuates misinformation, slander, lies, hate-mongering, and yes, even violence against us. These people and their anti-trans agenda have declared themselves our enemies. They believe that our mere existence is a threat to them and their way of life. Because they are the worst of us, they perceive nothing but the worst in others. <clears throat> I have been counseled by media experts not to use words like battle or war, but I am a warrior trained to fight and to win. I know warfare when I see it, and this is a war, and our casualties are very real. While warfare is seldom noble or honorable, in declared conflicts, military conflicts, we have rules of engagement and international agreements that protect the wounded, the fallen, and the captured. If American POWs were brutalized, murdered, or dismembered, as has happened to us, there would be a global outcry. Yet tonight, you'll hear the names of our fallen and how they died, but the media, will only give token acknowledgments of these tragedies, those they choose to report at all. <clears throat> Every member of the trans community needs to understand that because we are at war in a never-ending battle for our right to exist and to live freely and openly, we are all combatants. Conscripts without weapons, training, uniforms, or support. Soldiers forced into a battle not of our choosing. Many in our community choose stealth and shadows as their method of defense, shielding themselves from social persecution by hiding their trans identities. But not everyone has this option. Some cannot hide, and others choose to celebrate their differences. I am not one to judge a person's method of self-defense, but if we choose only to defend ourselves, then the battle is already lost. We need soldiers to pick up weapons and fight back. But in this battle, our tools of war must be words, deeds, and action. Violence should only ever be a last resort of self-defense. But we can fight back. We can demonstrate and exemplify that we can be the best of humanity. Equality in human rights cannot be, um, cannot be allowed to be withheld or discarded because of misperceptions of who we are. As others have before us, we must stand up, show the world who we are, and demand that which is our due. Many of us in this room are military veterans. You understand the horrors of war and the pain of loss, not just of our brothers and sisters, but of faith in ourselves and in our fellow man. 
But I ask you, remember the ideals and values we strove to embody and defend, duty, honor, country. These words are not empty. They are thoughts and feelings that speak to our hearts. We may have shed the uniform, but we will always have the hearts of warriors. And as warriors, and as a warrior, my heart is broken and bleeding. I have suffered at the hands of injustice and inequality. But worse still, I worry that I have failed as a leader and as a soldier. Because when I raised my right hand and swore an oath to protect the innocent, the weak, the young, I did not say, but not them. And yet still, we die and we suffer. If I can't protect myself and those I care about, then am I a failure? Perhaps. But I choose to think that bravery, courage, and heroism belong not only to those who win, but to those who lose and continue to fight. Being knocked down does not mean you are weak, but getting back up does mean that you are strong. I want to make my message clear tonight. This needs to end, not the remembrance of those that have fallen, for that should always be done, but the having of fallen to remember. We need to end the persecution, hatred, and violence against the transgender community. We need to rally our people and our LGB and straight allies and be a force that cannot be dismissed, discarded, or forgotten. We need to stand united and with one resounding voice say, no more. No more will we be silent or be the silent T. No more will we be an afterthought in policy and law. No more will we stand behind our allies and fight for their equality, but find ourselves alone in the shadows. No more will we be silenced. No more will we be dismissed as an unimportant minority. No more shall we allow the media and press to paint us in an unnatural light. No more will we be labeled as damaged, dysfunctional, or disordered. And no more shall we be victims. A common saying is, bleed, follow, or get out of the way. I say to you tonight that getting out of the way is not an option. Not for me, not for you. We are all in this fight, lead or follow. For in the end, we will either emerge as victors or be names waiting to be read in remembrance. Thank you. <clears throat>